how 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 did I delete those files my hard drive just crashed I lost all my holiday photos when my phone got stolen so we had a lightning storm last night fried my PC or perhaps your baby decides to be bam bam for a day and take your phone for a smash most of us don't have backup solutions in place, but the good news is there are options. For most of us, smartphones are our primary go-to camera. Modern smartphone cameras are absolutely fantastic, and the best thing about them is that they're always within arm's reach. For anyone with an Android device, or in fact most iOS devices as well, Google Photos is a fantastic backup solution. It's free, it's automatic, and it happens every time you take a picture on your phone. Let's go take a look. So the first thing you need to do is make sure that you're signed into your Google account. So let's go to google.com, click on sign in, if you're not already signed in. If you're already signed in, skip this part. Here you can sign in using details if you already have them. If you don't have an account yet, click on create account. We'll go through this just to show you how it's done. Once all your basic details are in, just click on next. Next up, Google needs a few details just for security purposes and account recovery. All right, you'll need to verify your number. Accept the privacy and terms. And you can proceed directly to photos.google.com. Right, and Google Photos loads up. So Google Photos welcomes you the first time you log in and then you have access to it. So now we're going to set up Google Photos so that it automatically uploads and backs up from your cell phone. So click on the main menu in the top left, go to settings, and here the first option says upload size for photos and video. You've got two options. First is a full resolution, but that counts against your 15 gig quota that you have, unless you want to buy more storage. The second option is a high quality, which is free unlimited storage. So we're going to go with that option for now, and I'll explain the difference later. So let's switch over to our Android devices. I'm doing this on a tablet, so my screen is a little bit bigger than yours maybe. If you don't have Google Photos installed, let's start by going to the Play Store. Search for Google Photos. There it is. Click on Install. Asks you for a few permissions. Just accept those and voila, we can open Google Photos. When it opens the first time, it may ask you to double check these settings. On our desktop, we've already selected high quality, so we're gonna stay with high quality. If you want to, you can set your photographs to backup over mobile data and not just a Wi-Fi but in my case, I'm gonna leave it just to Wi-Fi, so we leave that switch off. The last option at the bottom shows the account that my photos will be backed up to. I'm just gonna leave it there as it's the only account on this tablet. And then we click on Turn on Backup. Ah, it gives you one or two things that you can have a look at. We'll just skip past that. If the little screen with the options didn't come up when you open Google Photos, click on the menu on the top left, click on Settings, and here are our options. Okay, backup and sync at the top. And ensure that backup and sync is enabled with the account that you want to back everything up to. If you already have photos on your device, which is most likely the case, your photos will already be showing here. And let's head out and take a few photographs. Okay, so we went outside, we took a few photographs. Let's open up a gallery. You can see the couple of photographs that I took. Take a look in the top right, you see the little twirling circle. Click on that, and it shows you the account it's backing up to, as well as how many items are left still to back up. Once all your photos are finished backing up, you'll see backup complete, and your photographs are now up in the cloud on Google Photos. First thing you might want to do is clear out a few photographs that you don't want to keep. 
Uh, that's my cat alley. You can see I've taken a couple extra pictures of it. I want to get rid of... If you tap and hold on an image, you can select it, followed by multiple selections. Select by tapping on the image, deselect by tapping again, and all the ones with the blue ticks will be affected. Here we can click the bin icon in the top right. Do you want to move to trash? Yes. And it moves them to trash. Those photos are still there. They'll be removed within about 60 days. So here we are back on Google Photos on the desktop. Uh, we haven't refreshed the screen yet. So I refresh your browser or press F5. And voila, there are our photographs. You can see the photographs that we took out in the garden and we can manage them from here. If you have photographs on your desktop that you want to sync with Google Photos, you can either use the browser to upload the photographs or you can use the desktop app. So let's get that so long. It takes you to this website to download backup and sync. And when it's done, you can install. Click OK to finish installation. Then we just go back to our Google Photos page. We want to stay there. So let's launch Backup and Sync. Click on the Start menu and search for Backup and Sync from Google. Click on Get Started. And we need to sign in first. With Backup and Sync, you have the option of backing up just photos and videos or backing up all file types. Let's just stick with photos and videos for now. Let's not back up from the desktop. Let's just back up everything in photos, in pictures. So any picture that you put in your pictures folder will automatically back up to Google Photos. Right, so Backup and Sync is just reminding us that selected folders on our computer will continuously back up photos and video to Google Photos. So I'm sure most of you watching this will already have a whole lot of photographs in your library. So what I did was share a few photographs from my own library as this is a clean account and has very few photographs in it. So on your Android device, when photographs are shared with you, you do get a notification. You can just click on notif notification and it shows a bunch of photographs that were shared. And all the way at the bottom, you have the option to save to library and this saves the pictures in your own library. Once the photographs that are shared with you are saved to your own library, they'll be in your camera roll. And there we go. Let's switch over to the desktop and see that they're all synced over there. And there we have photographs. Quick and easy. You'll see that all the photographs are ordered by date and down the right hand side, if you move your mouse to the right side of the screen, it'll show a timeline of all the photos. Then you can click on any photo to open it up. And there you go. You'll see the photographs can be stored in any aspect ratio as well. And it's not only photos, but also video clips. You can browse through the gallery like this, scrolling up and down, or you can click on the images. And you can scroll left and right. Okay, so let's have a look at one or two images. You'll see every now and then Google Photos decides that uh, it can fix the lighting for you. And it comes up with this little, this little button on the top right. If you click on fix lighting, it does what it thinks is best for the photograph. And you can click, it says there at the top, click and hold to compare. Here's the original and here's the version with the fixed lighting. Click on save. Let's open up another one, have a look through the options. We can share a photo. From, from within Google Photos, it's easy to share photos. Click on share, and it allows you to share with an email address, create a link. If you click on create a link, it'll give you a link you can share with anyone. There you get a link to this, this photo alone. You can then copy and share that link on social media, websites, whatever you need. Right, next over is edit. Google Photos has a number of color filters. Along with some of the filters, you can adjust the intensity of the filter. There are basic adjustments as well. You can adjust your light and your color. And here's a pop filter to help the colors pop. You can also rotate if you decide you want to crop or rotate your image. Okay, click on done. Done again, and it saves your adjustments. 
So you can zoom in and out. Uh, when you zoom in, you've got a little window here on the top right. You can click and drag and view into, you can click and drag to the area of the photo that you want. You can zoom in a little bit more or a little bit less. Right, next option, the little eye is info. It gives you information on your individual photograph. You can add, you can add a description per photo. Perhaps it's a photo that has a lot of meaning to you for, for some reason or it was a special event, you can add a, add a description just to keep that memory. Under details, you find the date it was taken, the file name, the photo qualities, resolution, the device it was taken with, and the settings of the photograph, as well as where it came from. This, this for instance, was shared by myself to myself. So, well, between my two accounts, rather. So, it, so it, shows, that it, was, so it shows that it was shared from me. The photographs are also geotagged, so, well, if your photographs are geotagged, it will show you on a map where you took the photo. Hmm. Right, let's close info. You can favorite your photos. What happens here is all your favorited photographs go into an album and you can find them pretty easily. You can delete images if you like. What happens when you delete it is it goes into the trash first. You can change those settings at, I think, I think by default it's set to 60 days. After 60 days, items are cleared from your trash. And under more options, you can create a slideshow, download the original picture, rotate, add to album, add to a shared album, or you can archive. So here we have our library of photographs, and you can manage them as you need. You'll see though that you can't create folders to put images into, but you can manage albums. So an album is just a single level. You can't nest albums, unfortunately. What you need to get your head around with Google Photos is that you don't actually need a file structure like we're used to. Instead, Google Photos works very well with tags. Um, I don't have any albums here. I can create an album if I like, I'll come do that later. But I want to find all pictures with cats. And voila, it shows me all the pictures of my cats. I want to find pictures with food. And there we go, it shows all my food pictures. Ooh, what I wouldn't give for one of those pizzas right now. Let's find beach photos. There we go. Beach in Sedgefield. Actually, this is all in Sedgefield. It shows the videos as well. Right, so this, this is a picture of Dane cycling on the beach. Let's go back and search for cycling. And here it is. So if we want to search for all pictures in Searchfield, voila, there we go. This is how powerful Google Photos is with its sorting and searching. So yes, you can create albums and we'll do that now, but there actually isn't any need to. But just to show you how albums work, we can click on create album. Let's add, give the album a title. Let's call it Let's just give it a name and I'm going to add a couple of my holiday-ish looking pictures. And click on done. And here's our album, holiday, summer holiday of 2018. Right, these are not necessarily from 2018, but I'm just, <laughs> but I'm just showing you how to create an album. If you archive an image, Let's take the milkshake for instance. I don't want the milkshake to be in my library. So what I'm going to do is archive, but I still want to keep the picture, right? I just don't want it to show up in my library. Um, this probably makes more sense if you have things like screenshots, uh, documents that you want to keep, anything that doesn't really make sense in, in a photo library, you can archive. To find the archive, go up to menu in the top left, you'll find the archive. And there's your archived image. You can then click on it, um, unarchive it if you need, but you can still do exactly what you can do in the regular library. Under albums, we created our album called Summer Holiday. Let's go into that album. Here you have the title of the album. You can change that if you need. You can see all the images stored in the album. You can view all the pictures in the album, as well as remove an image from an album. Just hover over, click on the X. Otherwise, you can multi-select and then click on the X. There we go. 
but let's undo that because I want those albums pictures to stay in here. You're able to add images to the album using the add photos button. This will take you to your library and you can add multiple pictures. If you want to add an entire series, for instance, click on the first item that you like, hold shift and then move your mouse to the last item that you want. You see they're being highlighted and you can multi-select pretty easily. Then you can click done and it adds to the album. You can share the album. So instead of sharing a single picture, you can share an entire album with whoever you like to share it with. You can set the album cover if you like. Let's choose this picture rather. And you can delete the album. And there we go. You can check out your trash. So these are pictures that we put in the trash or just leave it to empty itself after 60 days. And under settings, you can change your, your settings that you said earlier. Group similar faces. Group, uh, Google Photos allows you to do facial recognition. Once you've identified faces in a photograph, it will pick out that face in every other photograph. And that way you can search for people. This works exceptionally well if you associate a face with a, um, a Gmail contact of yours. That way you can search for that person and it will show all photographs belonging to that person. So at the top of the Google Photos website, you have create option where you can choose to create, where you can choose to create individual options. Or you've got the upload. You can upload from computer or from Google Drive. So here it bring, when you click on upload from a computer, it brings up your, your file browser. And here I uploaded one photograph which is now added to my library. Voila, it shows you what was uploaded. You can add to an album or you can share an album. And here it is. Easy as that. So there you have it. Photographs sync between your mobile device and your desktop and access to them anytime, any place. So I know I swapped between the desktop and the tablet quite often during the video, but that's not a problem because both interfaces look almost identical and you can do the same on either one. Just one thing to keep in mind when you use the free up space option on your mobile, Google Photos removes the pictures from your device and leaves them only up in the cloud. So you only have one copy, which means you don't essentially have a backup. So it's good to keep them on the device if you can or make your own backup. But using Google Photos is a great free way of backing up all your photographs. So no, it's no Lightroom, but it works fantastically well as a gallery. And the best thing is if you lose your phone, you buy yourself a new one, you log in with your account, all your photographs are there. How cool is that? We'll see you in the next video.